Hi folks, it's uh, research update time again and I want to kind of recap what I've done so far and uh, where it's led. Um, I started off with studying the exclusion zone and charge separation because they were kind of central issues and that expanded into hydrophobic and hydrophilic surfaces and uh, acid and alkaline pH balances and uh, that resulted in basically two battery experiment lines. The one is the carbon felt uh, experiments and the other is the uh, borax uh, separator experiments. And they're really both the, the same. Uh, this is kind of a blown up version of a, of a, uh, of a thin film is the way I'm looking at it except it's, it's large. Um, but uh, that uh, is going to take a lot more uh, research and uh, time and uh, money and more of everything. This, on the other hand, is a, is a much simpler system and uh, it's very cheap to, to build and easy and uh, because it has any, doesn't use any electrolytes it has, it's going to have a long life to it and uh, it's already producing pretty good uh, uh, power already uh, and it's, uh, it's easy to maintain so it's going to have a really extremely long life because it's a, it's a repairable system uh, the only thing that can go wrong with it really is your metal plate's going to oxidize or uh, you're going to run out of water because, uh, and so because of that uh, uh, you don't have to worry about um, how many times a, a, a battery cycles uh, you know manufacturers are trying for they want batteries to go 500 or a thousand cycles before they you have to throw them away well you don't have to throw your battery away, you can just repair it. So, uh, it being a repairable battery, easily repairable, uh, you don't have to worry about it. Let's say we only go 100 cycles before the metal plate oxidizes. Well, then we clean the metal plate and we're good for another 100 cycles. So, uh, I think because of all that and, and the cheapness of the thing, if we look at the materials list over here, um, it, I've already got the materials for it and it's very cheap to make and zinc is the, ox the obvious metal to use because it oxidizes slow and I think the cheapest way to, to build it that I can think of at the moment is use galvanized steel uh, I, at Home Depot I saw 8 by 10 pieces for 88 cents each and then graph oil uh, I bought a hundred foot uh, 300 foot square uh, square feet of graph oil for 90 bucks so that would make a piece 8 by 10 about a quarter and then the other materials are probably a nickel uh, and then I think the cheapest way to enclose it would be put it in a plastic bag and that would add another penny or two so it would be about a dollar twenty to build one cell right now so um, I think as soon as we have the test chamber information uh, to fine-tune uh, this system with then uh, I'll go ahead and, and build the first uh, large uh, system and I'm going to build it the size that I need to uh, power my place which will be a 40 volt uh, system that I can blend right in with my solar system and put right in my battery bank uh, to, to help charge that up so and we'll do that after the uh, test chamber stuff and that'll probably take a month to do so that'll put it uh, in late April or uh, in May I'll build the first the first big system and then we'll test that so uh, that's what's that's what's coming up and uh, I've got some pictures to show you the battery uh, test chamber improvements that I've made this is the sunscreen I am put over the uh, test bench uh, it gets full sun right there in the greenhouse and uh, so I wanted to keep the dust off of it and keep the direct the heat off of it. I mean that's a piece of reflex text I had left over from uh, insulating my trailer. Okay in this picture you can see I built a mount for the pH sensor 
and uh, that allows the sensor to be uh, swiveled on a pivot and uh, also I can slide the sensor forward and backwards uh, on that and, uh, and then right next to the battery mount you can see the uh, temperature sensors the coming straight up out of the, uh, the bottom and uh, I've uh, hot glued some uh, clear plastic tubing uh, around the wires right there that uh, holds them up straight but still allows them to be uh, uh, bent over and, and flexible to some degree. Okay, in this picture you can see I have a zinc uh, plate mounted in the battery mount and uh, the pH sensor is uh, turned uh, and adjusted to uh, where the zinc plate just fits in the slot that's in the end of the pH sensor. In this picture you can see the uh, temperature sensors coming up through the bottom of the chamber and uh, the one on the right uh, you can see I have a kink in it and that allows me to uh, bend it over and tuck it under the bottom plate of the battery and it'll hold itself uh, against the battery plate. Uh, the one on the left uh, attaches to the uh, top uh, plate of the battery and I uh, have to rig up a mount uh, to put it on the head of the, uh, the battery clamp slide there. Here's a mount I made for the upper uh, temperature sensor. Uh, I just mount the battery uh, on the mount and then I slip the uh, sensor through the little piece of uh, clear tubing that I uh, hot glued onto the side of the uh, battery head right there. This is a cool looking picture that I accidentally made uh, switching between video and picture mode. I like the color on it and the overlap. It kind of looks like a manufacturing line. <laughs> okay, we still got a few more tests to run before we start data logging so uh, I'll see you next time and thanks for watching.